Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new box office breakdown show here on Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Denenberg. Today, we're breaking down the box office of the last box office weekend and weekend in the month of September. We're also going to break down the overall numbers, both domestic and worldwide, as well as previewing the entire movie schedule for the month of October as it pertains to theatrical releases. I'm Max Sinberg. Welcome back to Max Talks Movies. If you're new, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. We're so close to hitting nearly 250 subscribers. Help us by getting there by hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell for notifications. I do this show every single Tuesday. I also do other movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and out of theater reactions. I'll let you know at the end of the video what my next week of videos will be here on the channel. Also, please comment down below what did you see in theaters this past weekend? What did you see? What are you gonna see this upcoming weekend? Also, please like the video. So without further ado, because we have a lot to get into with this box office breakdown. Let's get into this past weekend, as it is the last weekend in the month of September. And I'll be honest with you, this is the, one of the happiest box office breakdown shows that I have to cover because at number one is The Wild Robot with $35.7 million. This is from Universal and DreamWorks. Um, if you did not see my review of The Wild Robot, um, you know, I did love this movie, but I did make a little bit of a rant in my review. And I was talking about how these are the type of movies that if they're not seen in the theaters and people don't go to the movie theaters, then this is why these studios will continue to make sequels of stuff that we've already seen before. Original content is where now, yes, this is based off of a book and clearly there are enough fans of the book to power this box office, but also the word of mouth is just incredible. 97% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes with a 98% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, as well as an A- Cinema score. Simple is everyone loves this movie. And that is really awesome. The fact that truly word of mouth dictated the box office really for this film. There's not that major star, like obviously probably Pedro Pascal, I guess, but him and Lupita Nyong'o have never been known as box office draws themselves in a non IP thing. So this was all because obviously Universal and DreamWorks are a good brand, but really it's a great movie and it's really surprising and really nice to see that this type of movie can be number one by over $20 million. That is just really cool. Um, these are the type of movies that I like seeing at the top of the box office. I hope even more people go check it out. So The Wild Robot is a monster success for Universal and DreamWorks. At number two in its fourth weekend is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice finally not in the number one slot, but it dominated as the big movie by far in the month of September, only dropping 37% and another 16.2 million up to 250 million domestically. Again, this movie is not doing very good at all internationally. So it's all along the same lines, total box office as film like Twisters and Alien Romulus, but its domestic totals are quite high. And uh, again, we're going to see more Beetlejuice, I think, moving forward. In third place on the negative side of the box office is Transformers 1, continuing to disappoint the box office, dropping 63% in its second weekend, only $9.1 million and only $39 million domestically. Um, Transformers 1, people seem to like it, both audience and critics, but it seems like this is not the franchise that people have faith in at the box office, even though the Michael Bay films gross, especially the last two billions of dollars each. Um, Bumblebee, Transformers The Last Night, and this are box office disappointments as it pertains to the overall franchise. 63%, it had major competition in The Wild Robot, but The Wild Robot completely cleaned house. It has already made $35 million in its first weekend, while Transformers has made $39 million in its first two weekends at the box office. So really rough news for Paramount. They have a live action Transformers G.I. Joe movie in the works, but maybe this franchise is not ready yet to come back in full force. Sadly, because I really enjoyed this movie. Sorry about me kicking the table. In fourth is another Indian film that's made its way into the top five, uh, De uh, Devara Part 1, grossing $5.6 million and only... A uh, thousand theaters. We're seeing a lot of Bollywood movies make their way. Really, since the pandemic, we've seen Japanese anime and Bollywood films make its way into the top 10 as 
since streaming services have happened, uh, really with Netflix, people have been watching uh, content from all across the world. And that's finally been hitting the box office finally since the pandemic. And another Bollywood film has found its way in the top five. Wrapping up the top five from um, Universal as well, Speak No Evil in its third weekend, only dropping 27%, 4.2 million, 28 overall domestically. Uh, this movie will probably dominate when it gets to uh, digital. Um, first time that Deadpool Wolverine are not on these charts, and Megalopolis turned out to be Megalopolis, as many people are saying uh, this past weekend. When we look at the overall numbers domestically this year, Inside Out 2 is still the biggest, 652 million domestically, to Deadpool and Wolverine's 631 million. That movie has already hit digital. It's definitely why it was not in our top five this past weekend. The Swiggle Me 4 is at 3 with 360 million. Dune Part 2 at 4 with 282 million. Twisters at 5 with 267 uh, million, excuse me. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, already the sixth highest grossing film domestically at 251. It will be passing Twisters, I would assume. I don't know if it will pass Dune Part 2, but should get into the top five domestic for the year. Godzilla x Kong the Empire is at seven with 200 and, uh, sorry, 196 million. Kung Fu Panda 4 at eight with 193. Also at 193 is Bad Boys Ride or Die at nine. And Kingdom of the Planet of the Ages is at 10 with 171. The worldwide numbers, this is when you combine the domestic and the international box office. Inside Out 2 is the biggest movie of the year. Just hit Disney Plus, $1.68 billion to Devil Wolverine's $1.31 billion. Um... The Spell Me 4 is at 3 with 954 million. Dune Part 2 is at 4, 709 million. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, is at 5 with 568.7 million. Kung Fu Panda 4 is at 6 of 548. Chinese films are 7 through 9, and Bad Boys Ride or Dies at 10 with 400 million worldwide. This is a big month. We are finally out of the summer movie season. It is now we're squarely. Heading into the fall movie season, a lot of awards films and still some pretty big movies hitting theaters in the fall. So because it's the beginning of the month, I'm here to break down and tell you guys all the movies that are hitting theaters in the month of October. Coming out this weekend, the big hitter, Joker, Folia Do, the sequel to the 2019 film Joker 1 was a $75 million budget that turned out to be a billion dollar movie. One of the big success stories of the last five years at the box office. Joaquin Phoenix won the Oscar for it in 2020. Now he's coming out with the sequel that has been heavily divided and criticized. The word of mouth was also kind of mixed for the original, but still that divisiveness led the people watching it. The question is, does the divisiveness even more hurtful for the second one? Will it cause it not to be as close to a success? Big time weekend. We will see if Joker Folia do can do the job because it is a musical. Uh, next weekend is October 11th. You have a couple releases here. Uh, Terrifier 3 hits theaters. It's been a very underground horror franchise, but finally, I think it'll probably do its best box office with this new film. Saturday Night it comes out also next weekend. That is the film based on the originals SNL with uh, Jason Reitman in the director's chair. Good reviews, not great reviews, but we'll see. It is an awards play movie. Also, The Apprentice also hits limited theaters on October 11th. That is the new film with Sebastian Stan playing the young version of Donald Trump. And the other major release that weekend is Piece by Piece. That's the Lego film about the bio, the Lego biopic about Pharrell. Uh, that's also coming out. So that's a big weekend next weekend. Heading into... Um, October 18th, the big release there is Paramount's Smile 2. Smile 1 was definitely a box office success. Wasn't the best creative, uh, let's just say, from a from a fan perspective. But Smile 2 has been, again, their advertising is very strong. That's hitting theaters on October 18th. And we end the month with October 25th with Venom, The Last Dance, the ending of Tom Hardy. For the moment, the ending of this Venom trilogy. Um, the first film grossed nearly a billion dollars. The second film had a bit of a dip off. And we will see how interested people are in the Sony Spider-Man universe. We started with Madam Web, didn't go well. Can Venom, let The Last Dance, get Sony Spider-Man universe back on track? Also, Conclave, a big new Oscar awards film starring Ray Fiennes. That is also hitting limited release on October 26th. So big hitters, 
some Oscar films, got a mixture of all of it coming out in the month of October here on the channel. So far this week, yesterday, you got my spoiler review of The Penguin Episode 2 and also my out-of-theater reaction for My Old Ass. You're getting this show today. Tomorrow, Wednesday, you'll get my full review of My Old Ass. Thursday will be the Episode 4 spoiler review of Agatha All Along. Friday should be my review for Joker, Folly Adu, both my out of theater reaction and my review of that film. Monday, back with another episode three breakdown of The Penguin, and then back here on Tuesday with another box office breakdown show.